Two years ago, I made a video on this camera and it's been about three years since I've uh, owned it and I've been using it. So let me give you my thoughts again and also update you on how my opinions have changed on this camera. Let me start off by just telling you about the camera. This is the Canon M100. It has a 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor. It has an EFM mount. It's got a burst rate of 6.1 frames per second. ISO levels up to 25,600. No external mic in or headphone out. Shoots video up to 1080p in 50 frames per second. No overheating throughout my entire time using it. And lastly, the big reason why I was drawn to this camera in the first place is the fact that it it has dual pixel autofocus with face tracking. So when I first bought this camera, I got it used. As you can see, it's like pretty badly beaten up, but a guy gave me a really good price for it. So I went for it. However, this is the first time I've actually felt vulnerable holding a Canon body because it's really plasticky, as you can tell. There are doors covering these ports over here, which are plastic doors, which feel like super flimsy. You can even hear the sound of them popping. But yeah, as you can see, did not made of the highest quality but probably the compromise for it to keep the price down the grip on this thing is honestly atrocious like they do the best they can with this little bump over here for your thumb but because there's no grip in front it kind of feels like you're holding a leica the only time i feel good holding this camera is when i have the small 22 millimeter f2 pancake lens from the efm mount other than that i don't really like holding this camera at all like there's no grip it's not rubber it's all plastic and you know, it feels like I can drop it at any time. So I've always got a wrist strap with me every time. So, you know, just in case it slips off one day, which it has not yet. So I guess there is some merit to that. That is the goal of the EFM mount anyways. Uh, it's meant to be super portable. So this is like really small. You can pack it down anywhere. It uses the Canon LPE 12 batteries and only has one SD card slot. It has a touchscreen LCD that only flips upwards. It doesn't flip down like the M6 Mark II. It only has one dial on the top, unlike other cameras which might have one at the back or like a wheel. Not a big fan of that. We'll get to that in a second. It has a mode switch that only goes between photo, video, and auto mode. It's a pop-up flash similar to the M6 Mark II. You're starting to notice a pattern here. A tripod mount that's so flimsy it feels like it could break at any time. And lastly, it comes in four colors. I have the one in pink. Clearly, it's a really simple camera. It's got really good functions for its price and its size. It houses an APS-C size sensor in this kind of a body. Generally, the size is a really big factor because you can literally fit it anywhere. I can fit it in the side pocket of my bag if I need to travel with it. It looks casual enough. It's not one of those attention-grabbing cameras where like, you know, you see a black camera with big DSLR kind of body and then everyone's just like, oh, it's a professional photographer here kind of thing. This one looks like a normal point and shoot, which I like, so you can bring it to very small, intimate, like family gatherings and no one's going to be like intimidated by the fact that there's a big camera or something there. You can also use it for street photography. I think the last time I emphasized on this a lot because it's so inconspicuous that like you can just like walk around, have it tilt up. Like it's uh, one of those viewfinders that you can like see from the top and you know just shoot away and no one's really going to care about you. You won't get stopped typically just because it looks like a not professional camera because in many ways it's not but the functions that it does carry can say otherwise. And last I think what I really like about this is the fact that it has good enough image quality. I can't stress how important that is because like everyone's always talking about like how great is the image quality on this, how like should I be concerned about it? And and with 24 megapixels on an APS-C sensor, like really at this generation, it's gonna take good photos. All of these cameras are gonna take good photos and they're gonna look similar in many ways. Speaking of image quality here, I'm going to be comparing them to a couple of cameras like the M6 Mark II and the R6. So these are images from these three cameras. Can you tell which one the M100 is? Now, if you could tell them apart and like, you know, your super good eyes to be able to tell which one the M100 actually is, good for you because they're all from the M100. And now here, I'll mix in some R6 images as well as some M6 Mark II images. Let me know if you really see a big difference in them. I'll say the low light performance on this camera is nothing to shout about. It's okay. It's not the best, but it's not bad. It's very comparable to the M6 Mark II, and that camera does do pretty well in low light. I'll say it's not perfect, but you're not going to be able to take photos in pure darkness anyway. However, in video, it does look a little bit more digitally sharpened compared to the R6 as well as the M6 Mark II, even with all the settings like brought down. So I'm not 
a really big fan of that but it, it's a it's a compromise that you're gonna have to work with if you get this camera on its own i don't think you'll notice it as much but when you're comparing it to the other cameras then and you're gonna be able to see it one of the main things I don't like about this camera, which I have mentioned, is the grip itself. The fact that I, I don't feel safe like holding it, but you know, it's what the design is for. It's probably a camera made for people who do want that really good portability. I, however, find it genuinely a compromise unless I'm only using that 22mm f2 lens, which is, you know, small enough to have that balance weight there. Other times, my preference would be the M6 Mark II, small, but with still a substantial grip for you to be able to hold a camera well and not have your fingers ache after a long day of shooting. So Secondly, I'm not a fan of like using the touchscreen for every single setting. I'm okay with using touchscreens. It's just that I don't want to use it every single time I want to change like, you know, and my aperture, I've got a touchscreen and then like flip and then uh, shutter speed, click and then switch and then ISO click and then switch. Obviously, there are ways to map them to these buttons over here. I have tried that before, but because the grip is not good enough for me to use this one handed, I can't like access the buttons to be able to change that. Obviously, it's not for everyone. It's more suited for people who are used to touch screens so you know a lot of people are gonna like it if you like touch screens this is gonna be perfect so I learned most of my photography and videography on this camera itself because it allowed me the freedom to experiment not only with the ways of like using mirrorless cameras or DSLRs because I've owned DSLRs previously and this camera just, it's an update to what I had at that time. And the fact that it is a mirrorless camera means I could adapt lenses like vintage lenses from my film cameras on this as well. That gave me a lot of like freedom to move things around which is why I stuck to using mirrorless for so long. And I still am. I think it's a great camera for beginners who wonder if they would like to work with a more like professional digital photography workflow because of things like having an interchangeable lens system so like you know having different options while you're working and also the raw file management the fact that you shoot and edit raw files in post uh, that's gonna be something that you can try on this camera first before you think about moving to you know more substantial bodies obviously all Canon semi-pro beginner to pro level cameras cameras do shoot raw files but uh, because of the price of this and the size of it it's not much commitment compared to a lot of other cameras to try doing this so if you're looking to try that more professional workflow then this could be a good camera to try lastly my favorite thing about this camera is the fact that it's a perfect backup to my m6 mark ii well it's not the perfect backup to my m6 mark ii the perfect backup to my m6 mark ii would be another m6 mark ii since the size is not that much different from this camera however for now it's it sits in the bag whenever I use my M6 Mark II out in the shoot. In case something happens to my M6 Mark II, I just have this and it's it's so light, you barely feel like it's there. So yeah, leave a comment if you want to know more about this camera. Obviously, I've got the other video that I've made before. Please don't watch that. <laughs> like, subscribe, and um, check me out on Instagram. I haven't said that for a while now. So I have an Instagram account. Go check it out down in the uh, description below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.